women, it is common. There are new moves to combat incidences of domestic violence. New domestic homicide reviews will oblige police and other agencies to review the circumstances surrounding the death of a person aged 16 and over, where domestic violence, abuse and neglect were factors. Now, together with the police, health services, local authorities, probation teams, voluntary groups and any other bodies connected to a victim, uh, will now have to work together to pinpoint exactly what went wrong and consider how to spot the signs when someone's life is in danger. So, will this help uh, after another life has been lost? And if we ourselves spot the signs of abuse in others, do you think it's our duty to intervene? Um... Yes, I think it is our duty to intervene. Whether you can make somebody change their life is another matter. I think it's brilliant. I think if, if, we're, if they're looking into reasons why domestic violence is, is resulting in death, I welcome it. I think it's, it's really, they should review it anyway. And it's interesting to me that there's been a rise in the number of young people affected by domestic violence because in my life, I, I was in a, a physically abusive relationship when I was very young. And, and when you're that sort of age, you don't tell your parents. What, what do you class as very young? Um, Seventeen, um, and and I and I don't I don't know how anybody any of the agencies could have helped me on my way. But but what what I did was I kept it from my mum because I didn't want to worry her. In fact, she only found out very recently that it had actually been going on. But I had sort of um, it resulted in you know he was he was aggressive and he did actually beat me up. Um, but, there, but there was one particular thing that happened where he had a sun ray lamp and I asked how to use it and he knew that it could only be used for a certain amount of time but didn't tell me and so left me in front of this machine which was a different kind of abuse knowing full well that I would get burnt and I ended up with third degree burns, went to hospital on my own, went home to my mum and my mum said, oh my God, you know, you, you, you've got to come home. So that was the thing that got me home. And thankfully, my mum instilled in me massive high self-esteem. So I had the courage to get away from this man. Um, and it wasn't easy. I, mm. I had to build up the courage to get away. I think it's... It's awful. I don't know if people feel they're ever free from something like this, often until the person is actually dead. Um, you know, and the options of, of getting away from an abusive partner are, are, are very limited. I wonder, looking at it after the event, how much that can actually do. Because mm. people tend not to involve outsiders. You keep it a secret. I did. Um, and if a friend is, in, is going through something similar, I would get involved. And I have tried to help a friend out of a relationship. But it's very wearing because you do it time and time mm. again. And, they don't, and if they don't listen, it's frustrating, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. I think I would. Um, I think it's very important to have somebody to tell when, when you're going mm -hmm. through that. Because I think... Um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to tarnish that person's relationship where your family's concerned, as ridiculous as it sounds. You know, you protect, I, them. You, you protect them. And, you know, it, it is weird. I've had, quite, I've had violent relationships. And there, and there was one particular, I was quite young, and I didn't see it at the time as abuse. I would say that would be very dramatic for me to say that. Mm. Because at the time, because I was brought up by my, by my father to always fight back, you know, if I got a smack, um, I, I, I'd fight back. So it'd end up in a physical fight between, between the two of us. So I always thought that that wasn't abuse and until also, one time. They show remorse as well. When they do these well, things, they yes. actually show that they know well, exactly, that they're bad. Exactly. Uh, but there was just the one time when I actually felt, I felt some, I felt different and I felt, I hadn't actually done anything we were having an argument and he just turned out, uh, turned around and absolutely punched me so hard, I was black and blue in my shoulder and I actually couldn't move it for a week. Mm. And I felt depressed and I felt hurt and upset by the whole thing and did you do anything about it no it was it was it was like i said no I, I i went to it was there was a family do and it was summer and i wanted i thought shall i shall i just go with a strappy dress on it i mean it was green by this time the bruise was massive mm. and i didn't until the afternoon and i took my cardigan off and i sat there and i wanted somebody to see it sure i wasn't going to say what happened and when when a certain person asked mm. me Oh my God! What have you done? I said, had an accident, fell downstairs. I knew that they knew that that wasn't the truth, and it was it was never mentioned again. But really, maybe I was crying out for somebody to go. 
this is this this is wrong. Mm. You know, uh, but you don't, do you? It's you don't. You, uh, you know. It's something that unfathomable to, to me. I mean, I'm terribly. I shouldn't say I'm terribly lucky. You shouldn't be lucky. Uh, just because you've never been in an abusive relationship. My parents are terribly happy to get... I've never seen it, I've never witnessed it within my own yeah. uh, four walls. Um, but I, I, I do know some... I don't... Some, sometimes I think, uh, you know, it doesn't... It's not just about slapping, it's not about just about punching. You can ruin a woman's life just by belittling her. Or a man's life. Or a man's yes. life, totally. I do understand that. I do know that occasionally you can try and be an emotional sponge for friends who are in, rela in slightly abusive relationships. But then you also have to be able to, when their relationship is back on an even keel, they don't want you to bring that up again. And you almost, it's so difficult to forget that it ever happened. And you want to shake them and say, well, why are you still with him? Mm. And then they start making excuses for him and all that sort of thing. And you just have to swallow mm. it. Because adult women are not like children. They cannot be taken away from an abusive relationship. I mean, you know, the authorities can step in with children mm. uh, because mm -hmm. they're not adults and they can be taken to a place of safety. But I don't think that um, the authorities can step in with adults. And women don't you think then, I mean, because we, we touched on the, at the start of this, just how many uh, agencies or bodies, as it was called, uh, could well be involved? You know, the police, health services, local authorities, probation teams, voluntary groups. You touched on it where you said you don't want to tell anybody because it's, in, it's embarrassing. You know, you have a, a certain public image. You're a, a happily married couple with children. You live in a lovely house and yeah. lovely car and everything's going along swimmingly. But behind closed doors, your life is hell. And you, you don't want to admit to everyone that, uh, that there are terrible there's, cracks there. I think there so are don't you think then that, that's, that, that it's so important that there are people that are nom uh, anonymous that you can talk to so that yes, you don't I have do. that thing it's of going back to friends who know what it's the, really like. All of these people have to be invited in. That's mm. the only thing. You have to be open to the idea of discussing the problems. And most people in these relationships, sadly, no, they're, yeah. they're in denial. Mm. Well, um, um, if, if you've been affected by anything that we've talked about today, we've got full details on our website of people that you can go and talk to. Don't suffer in silence. Now, our first guest has been a feminist since she knew what the word meant. And uh, as the presenter of Woman's Hour since 1987, she's never shied away from discussing difficult topics. Now, she's opened up about the hardest subject of them all in a new book about her treatment for cancer and how her little dog made life worth living again. Please welcome Jenny Murray. <laughs> Fine. You look incredibly well. Thank you so much. You do look well. Well, do you know, best. loose women, woman's hour, hardly a difference. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, but it was interesting what you were talking about a moment ago yes. because I interviewed yesterday Graham Mulhane, yes. who is the brother of Julia Pemberton, who was shot by her violent yes. husband, as was his nephew. And he is the person who has really put the pressure on for mm -hmm. this kind of review to happen. Because, you know, he says what you learn from looking at the mistakes that were made in a case like his sister's mm -hmm. may well save the Did, life of another woman in the future. Do you mean in, in terms of, in of uh, well, the you authorities know, he, getting involved sooner he, or taking he knows, things more seriously? He knows that, that she contacted the police yeah. a couple of times and mistakes were made. And so by reviewing what happened then... Mm -hmm you will learn better It could also give you legal result. recourse as well. If, you, if the police were involved and nothing happened, if you want to go back and get some form of justice, maybe, you can say, well, look, on four occasions the police came and nothing... You know what I mean? It could give mm. you some kind of legal recourse. Yeah, but she was dead, unfortunately. In your personal experience, Jenny, what, what, what do you think on this? What, do, you, do you think that people should open up to friends or do you think perhaps stick to, to um, anonymous professionals who know what they're, they're talking about? I think about? it's incredibly difficult. I mean, like, like you, I, I have no personal experience of it, but I know an awful lot of women who mm. have. Um, Would you be there for a friend you if, know, if they were? Places like Women's Aid, uh, Refuge, you know, they're ter terrifically supportive mm -hmm. agencies that will do their very best. They're underfunded. Um, they should be funded mm. a lot better. We've just learned that the poppy organisation that protects women who've been trafficked into this country has lost its funding disgracefully. Um, so w we need these organisations so that women have a safe place mm. that they can go to with people who know how to protect and support them. Now, Jenny, you, you've been through a fairly difficult time yourself recently with, with breast cancer. How are you now? Well, I'm fine. Uh, I say I'm fine. You know, <laughs> what do you do when you've had cancer? I had... 
My parents died within six months of each other. I was diagnosed with cancer on the day my mother died. And then I got a horrible thing after chemotherapy called avascular necrosis, um, which damages your hips. <laughs> so I couldn't really walk. And I'd just got my little dog, so I couldn't take him for the walks that I intended to until I got them both replaced. Um, and now I have two little dogs, which you saw one for each at hit. the yeah. beginning. <laughs> one, for each, one for each side. Oh, Absolutely. No, Girl, you're quick. Oh, which, which, one is, which one is which? Butch. That's a joke, by the way. That was my Butch, husband's bless. name for him. Uh, is the white one. The one sitting uh, that lying one. down. I'm, I'm ashamed to say that he wears blue and she wears pink, but they oh. only had <laughs> two colours in those uh, harnesses. Feminist. I know, Fair I know. Um, and, uh, and she's called Frida, and, uh, and he's the sort of rugby prop forward of the Chihuahua Aww. world, you know, he's, he's hench, and she's the Kate Moss, all so big ears and long legs, and <laughs> very, very skinny. You looking so well, is this all because the love of a, a couple of good dogs? Well, you know, what's interesting is when, when you get to the point where your children leave home, because they've oh, grown up, you're going through this, and, the, and all the kind of life and energy, all the things that you were really cross about when there were great big shoes in the hallway and you said, clear your shoes away, or there was rap music coming from upstairs, turn that music down, mm -hmm. suddenly it's gone. And you have boys really quiet. out here, the big shoes. Two boys, boys, the big the size 12s, okay? <laughs> they were seriously big shoes. But all the life seems to just drain out of the house. And I kept saying to uh, David, my partner, you know, maybe a dog. No, 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 too much responsibility. You know, we're free now to do things. And eventually, I, to my shame, played the cancer card and said, you know, oh, when you've been so ill <laughs> and <laughs> you know you want somebody to cheer you up and something to look forward to for maybe the next Jenny, 15 years. Why dog. chihuahuas, having had because big size of size 12 feet, why did you go for two very small dogs? Because they're small. Right. Because I travel, we, we live up north in the Peak District, that's Lovely, where our house beautiful. is, mm -hmm. and I have to work in London a lot. So I needed a dog that was easy to transport, and as you can see, they are. They, are. they don't go in a bag, by the way. Well, I do, do know, not approve of dogs being carried in bags. This is something that really struck me, because you're, you're, you're such an institution. You're you know, an, an intelligent, feisty feminist woman who presents Woman's Hour and you've got two little chihuahuas. It just, it Why seems would like a woman like a me have a rat on a string, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to do. Because what, the other thing I wanted to do in this book, apart from discussing the relationship with a dog which is so and this warm is here. My and boy satisfying, but. is that, you know, people treat chihuahuas as toys. They are not toys. They are dogs. He is the toughest little guard dog you mm. could hope to have. Jenny, can I, can I just say, I, I, I was away at the weekend and I read that book from, from, from the beginning to the end and I get you. And I said to the girls this morning, I said, I read the book and I understand your love of dogs. And if people don't have that understanding, it's, it, it, it's like talking a different language. I'm going through, I cried actually, because I'm going through the same. My dog's probably got weeks and I'm just putting it off. And, I, I, and it just destroyed me. And I know when you, when you write about how they make you feel, uh, you know, I, I get what you mean. And I totally understand that when you're going through cancer, a dog's love is unconditional. Uh, unconditional. And, and There's no relationship like no. that of a dog. Yeah. You know, there, there is no person you will ever meet mm. who will, every time you arrive at your front door, yeah. will <laughs> greet you unconditionally yes. Cheerfully. You know, Hello, yes. I'm pleased yeah. to see you. you know, no grumping, no and you complaining. Can, you can read more about that. Uh, my boy Butch, you saw him there just on the sofa. There's a book all about him and, and Jenny, your relationship with him. <laughs> lovely, <laughs> lovely to see you. It's uh, Jenny Murray, everyone. <laughs> okay, it's a great time, but when we come back, which of us is proud, proud to wear our Scrooge head, as in we're being penny pinchers, as early as spring? Vaccine. <laughs>